Okay, so we need to talk about one of the most freaking cool things I found out about Dune 2 recently. So hopefully you had the chance to uh, catch Dune 2 in IMAX already. But one of the creative decisions that I just love in the film was how they uh, used uh, the Harkonnen planet being in black and white when they were outside in the, uh, in the daylight. Now the theory of black and white came because uh, as, as the creative team was talking together, they realized that if they were going to have this like gladiator sand fight, they needed it to not feel like Arrakis. It'd be very easy for those two to feel similar. They needed them to feel different. But then there was this additional thought. What if we captured it using infrared light to help heighten the difference of world building? Now, as cool as this idea was, they actually ran into a number of roadblocks. And the first was uh, they were using Aerie 65 cameras to capture Dune 2, but there's only a limited number of monochrome Aerie cameras. And it turns out during the filming, Aerie didn't have enough to rent them. So they ended up having to modify traditional Aerie 65 millimeter cameras to work this way. Now, uh, from what I understand, and Airy 65 uh, cameras have an infrared filter built into them. And that filter is there to cut out any sort of infrared. So you're only seeing the, uh, the visible spectrum. Well, what they did is they, first of all, removed that so the sensor could actually receive infrared. And then in front of it, they added a filter that only let infrared light through. So uh, no visible spectrum should be let through there, which is kind of a, a mental idea to think about that you could put a filter in front of the camera that blocks all visible light but not infrared. It's something trippy because our eyes, right, can only see uh, visible light. Now, there actually are these filters out there. If you wanted to try something similar, uh, I found just on B&H a, uh, a Hoya filter, which um, uh, blocks all visible light, but should let infrared through. It it's really cool. I, I kind of want to buy one and, and test it out a little bit. But what's intriguing about capturing infrared light is because they weren't using a monochrome camera, that infrared actually wasn't black and white. So while the light response they got was only infrared coming through, they did have to turn down saturation to complete zero to get the black and white look in post. Now maybe you're asking, what is infrared light? In which case, one moment, let me grab a prop. All right, so here I have a, a TV remote. So the way infrared light works is it's a light that we can't see with our eyes, but still exists in the universe. So uh, remotes are a really good way of doing this because cameras can see infrared, although our eyes can't. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this up to the camera here and I'm gonna press a button. Do you see that little light that's flashing on the front? If I look at this with my eyes, um, well, I guess there's this little light blinking on it, but you should see in this little dome, you're seeing that little dome, that thing blinking. If I look at this with my eyes, it doesn't look like anything because it's outside of the visual spectrum, but cameras can see it. So what they did is that filter that they put on the front of the camera blocked all visible light, but let infrared through. What's interesting is because we can't see infrared, infrared light on cameras actually has some pretty bizarre effects. So for example, a shirt might look black to us in the visible spectrum, but the way infrared bounces off it, it might be white. So one of the things, and I just feel like no one's talking about this, in the movie, any scenes in infrared, they had to have two separate costumes for. One that was specifically designed for the visible spectrum, so during the indoor scenes that the Harkonnens would wear, but then a second set of costumes that looks, you know, that, that the textures are all the same, but designed specifically for how infrared light would reflect off of them and look in the camera. A great example of the difference of how infrared reflects versus color is the uh, the Bene Gesserits, you know, are, have those very black outfits that we're used to seeing in the film. But when they step out into the, the infrared spectrum, you'll notice that those head coverings become white. That is a great example of how infrared bounces off fabrics differently, uh, whether you are in the color spectrum or the infrared spectrum. But here's what's also just so amazing about the film. There are some shots, and you probably noticed this if you were in the theater, where they transition between color into infrared. In this smooth transition, characters will walk from the shade into the light. And when I was in the theater, I was like, holy crud, how is this happening? Like, because I was wondering, did they take, you know, a, a color camera and then did, did they try to like transition the color grade to make it look like it matched the infrared? I was like, how did they transition so smoothly between these two images? And the solution is just as cool as you had hoped. They actually used a 3D camera rig to allow both cameras to see the exact same framing and transition between them. Now, if you're not familiar with 3D camera rigs, uh, th I feel like they were super popular uh, a number of years back. If you watch the Peter Jackson Hobbit movies, um, those had a lot of behind the scenes with 3D rigs. Basically, the way it works is you have one camera filming straight on and another camera filming from either below or above, but there's a, uh, there's a little mirror, like a two-way mirror, so that the 
cameras can basically see the same image uh, from uh, two different um, locations on the camera rig. So they use this technique in Dune, but rather than making the cameras see two slightly different images like you would with 3D, right? You like in 3D, you would try to have two different eye perspectives. Rather than that, they lined them up perfectly so they could see the exact same image and then they could fade between color and infrared in those transition shots. Which you gotta admit, is just a wicked awesome solution to this problem. I, I am so in love with how Greg Frazier is experimenting with films, his philosophy behind them. I, I just can't wait to see what they continue to do in Dune 3. But this was, a, this was an aspect of the film I feel like not enough people are talking about. The creativity and the technical problem solving is awesome and I just thought you should know. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to see more content like this in the future, hit the subscribe button and let me know your thoughts down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this little behind the scenes bit as much as I did. All right, I'll see you in the next one.